10 seconds to pick. All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to this game of the 82L Season 6 in-house league. Uh, the ticket apparently is still in the Season 5, but this is the 6th season of 82L, and so it is the 6th season of 82L in-house league. Uh, today we'll be seeing Submaniac, Alvnik, Prohibit, Jakey, and IRB Digital on the Dire versus Alucard, Maya Tovent, Dante Bot, Lexapron, and Anonymous on the Radiant. Uh, Submaniac immediately beating out the banning out the Juggernaut, fairly standard at this point. Uh, followed by a Doom ban, which is has not really been seen much in this particular tournament, but maybe there's something in particular that Dire Radiant rather have in mind that Doom would uh, really screw up their plans for. The Shadow Fiend ban also is pretty standard for this particular tournament. Uh, so not really much showing in hand there. And the Troll ban. So we have the Troll and the Juggernaut ban, as well as the SF. Doom is a little bit strange, but we'll see how that fits into the draft that Radiant decide to pick up. Lion is the immediate first pick. Uh, Dyer knew exactly what they wanted. And they just went ahead and grabbed it. Pretty solid support all around. Probably probably one of the strongest supports in Dota right now. Uh, with that instant hex. Although it was nerfed just recently. In 6.82c they turned the movement speed for the chicken back up to 140. The same as for Sheepstick, where it was 100 before. I think they also decreased the cast point on... Or increased, rather, the cast point on... The stun? I'm not entirely sure about that. Let me just check. Radiance turn to royally screwed up. Six point eight two C. Oh wait, no. Six point eight three C. Oh. A Skyrath Mage. First pick out of the Radiant. Now, I absolutely love playing this hero as a core. I think it scales really well into the late game. And if you build some agi items like a uh, an Eth Blade, and then you end up getting enough armor to really handle physical damage, and you start attacking quite quickly, and you can become a pretty significant right clicker. But it looks like they're actually just going to run this as roaming support duo with the Vengeful Spirit. And uh, Tidehunter is the pick out of the Dire. You know, he's not able to get roamed on very easily. He can handle being in the lane there, and once those supports do lead to roam, he can bully out most carries, so whatever Radiant decide to pick up for that. Radiant uh, ban the Undying, which I have not seen much of in this tournament at all, so I wonder what they're sort of working for. The Doom and the Undying ban, so it's a strength here they kind of want. Doom shutting him down. Uh, Five seconds. Hurry. Maybe they want a timber saw off lane, but two bands for one hero seems a little bit excessive. And a Slark band again, not really very telling. Those three heroes are just really strong at the moment. Uh, Slark, not as much seen in the pro circuit, but he's been pretty dominating here in the tier two and tier three tournaments. So, Dyer trying to figure out, you know, what is it that these two bands are about? Because Undying really speaks to some something. Uh, it's a very good at being anti tri lane, so they choose to ban the Medusa. I think that this is sort of just like they're not really sure, so they want to ban a super late game hero, because it doesn't really fit well with their lineup, but they do have the Lion that would be pretty good, and they could draft a Nyx... Oh no, they already have the Tidehunter. They could draft a Nyx supporter mid, but you normally see that in the offlane, and they already have the Tidehunter for that. And as Radiant decide on this next ban, we're going to go ahead and take a look. Let's look at the... Okay, so the ban is a Jakiro. They're worried about push. There's already the Tidehunter. Excuse me. There's already the Tidehunter and the Lion, so you don't really want to try and team fight too much into that early, even with a Vengeful Spirit and a Skyrath Mage. And if they have the Jakiro as well on support, then they're going to be able to just push towers down at around 15-20 minutes. 
And especially with that support duo, like they want to go for a greedy late game carry. Generally, is what you would see at least. And they wouldn't be able to handle that 15 to 20 minute push down three or four towers pretty much instantaneously. And they pick up a gyrocopter. Now, gyrocopter synergizes very well with the Vengeful Spirit. And I wouldn't be surprised if they actually choose to pick up a drow here next, unless Dire take it away from them with this pick. Uh, the Drow Venge combo with one extra carry, either Morphling or Gyrocopter generally, has been very strong recently with the change to Drow's aura. Or rather, to her E, turning it into an aura. Uh, Vengeful Spirit was also nerfed slightly in 6.82c. They reduced the time that the Minus Armor lasts from her Wave of Terror, the Howl. And they aren't picking the Drow right off, so maybe that isn't what they wanted. It would work really freaking well here. And that would kind of explain the Doom ban, maybe? I don't know, it doesn't really explain the bans very well, but Drow... Drow would be strong. Like, right here and right now. Especially because it gives their supports, which don't really offer a lot beyond their stun and nukes. Uh, it gives those supports something to do during their cooldowns that can be useful. And they can really scare off that line and that Witch Doctor if they aren't burst down right away. And you don't really want to use all that burst on a support if there's a teamfight happening. Unless, of course, you don't expect you'll be able to uh, nuke down the carry. But they don't seem to actually know what they want to grab. The Witch Doctor may be turning them off. Maybe they were looking for the BKB carry, and the Witch Doctor with the Tidehunter ultimate. If you don't get the BKBs off, then he's going to rip through you, and even if you do get the BKBs off and try to run on the Tidehunter, you're just going to get Witch Doctored to death. But they're running quite a ways into their bonus time here. Anonymous is having some difficulties, it would appear, deciding on a hero. I still say Drow. Like, that would be so strong right now, especially because it you have the Vengeful Spirit next to the Gyrocopter, so he gets all of that extra. They do go for an Ursa, but they have the Vengeful Spirit with the Gyrocopter, he gets that on his flat cannon, and the Drow Aura on his flat cannon. It would just be so ridiculous for that early team fight. But Ursa is the hero they decide to go with, so it's probably going to be a Gyrocopter mid. It could be an Ursa jungle, but they already have... Uh, two supports, unless that Skyrath is a mid Skyrath. But it'll be interesting to see how they decide to lane this. I mean, it's, it's almost certainly actually just a Gyrocopter mid with an Ursa safe lane, but I'll be interested to see if maybe that Skyrath gets to be a core. And I are just now dipping into their bonus time. They're pretty confident because it took so long for Radiant to decide on a hero. They're like, you know, maybe they have their plan in mind, but. We're okay dipping into our time for this. And just one moment while I fix this. My apologies for those listening in client. I did not have the open mic set. And the Naga Siren is picked, so this is going to be quite the interesting game of timings. You have two roaming support duos that really want to try to get a lot done early, and they actually picked the Naga into a Gyrocopter who can flat cannon down the illusions unless she gets a heart relatively quickly, and she needs the, definitely beyond the heart, needs to get that butterfly before Gyro manages to pick up an MKB. Uh, the next pick, or ban rather, is uh, a Magnus. That does make sense. They have the Tidehunter already. They, the Dire need a mid. Most likely that Naga's going to be the safe lane farmer. And they have Song to set up for Ravage, and if they have the Tidehunter ulti as well, that would be quite strong. But that doesn't really seem like what they're going to go for. It could be strong. But I haven't seen Submaniac draft a whole lot of Magnus in these games. And he's sort of running it down to the wire now with the last of that bonus time. He's going to 
decide to ban out the centaur. Now this makes sense. Ursa is one of those heroes, he has a lot of trouble because in team fights he gets kited around a lot. He has to build a BKB this game because of all the team fight ultimates that they have, and if he's getting kited around, Witch Doctor can use his ulti. There is a, an instant silence on the Skyrath, but he must be pretty far away from the fights. Vengeful Spirit has the stun for the Witch Doctor, and Gyre's Missile, which is not going to get there in time for anything useful. And the Centaur would really fix a lot of their problems. The Ursa can get in there, the Skyrath can get the silence off uh, before the Tide Ravage or the Naga ulti. Five seconds remain. But they may actually have stumped the Radiant here. It looks like maybe they did wish to pick up that Tide Hunter. Not Tide Hunter, to pick up that Centaur, but they do decide to go with a Clinx. So this Clinx pick is mostly strong because it forces the Lion and Witch Doctor to be sitting in lane behind the Naga Siren because Naga cannot solo lane versus the Clinx. So Dyer picked up this really nice roaming support duo, but they're not going to really be able to have the chance to get a whole lot done on the map. But Gyrocopter versus Tidehunter, Tidehunter is going to, or no, it's going to be Ursa. Uh, Ursa, actually, that's still going to be perfectly okay for Ursa because of the stacks that he gets of his passive. And Dyer's Radiance, rather, supports are going to be free to move around the map, but Dyer's going to be stuck behind that Naga Siren because of the Clink's pick, so this could be really strong. It does really, really push them towards like a 25 to 30 minute timing before the Naga Siren just becomes too much to handle, but I think that they have the tools to push down the towers early enough if they get a nice early Blink Dagger on the Ursa. And Submaniac, he drafts for the Dyer, that last pick Zeus in middle. He's like, you have three super squishy heroes, you have an invis, everything that Zeus is good against. Uh, the Clinks versus Zeus, though, Clinks can burst down Zeus before Zeus is able to get any spells off. But if they have vision ready, then the Clinks is just going to die and die and die. So it'll be interesting to watch this game, see which team outplays the other. The support lion, Jakey, is going to be play. He got. Um, uh, Null Talisman first. Is this a mid line and a support Zeus? No, it's a mid Zeus. So a casual Null Talisman on the four position line. There's going to be a five position Witch Doctor being played by IRB Digital. The farming safe lane Naga will be played by Prohibit. The off lane Tide Hunter will be played by Aubnik. And where did our Zeus go? The mid lane Zeus will be played by Sub Maniac Dota 2. For the Radiant, we're going to see them set up here at the top wards. Their lanes are most likely going to be an off lane. Anonymous player dot anonymous, nice. Uh, are most likely going to be an off lane clinks played by anonymous. A roaming support played by Alucard in the Skyrath mage. He already skilled his nuke, so he wants to get some damage off here. Uh, probably a farming safe lane Ursa played by Dante bot. Uh, most likely a, a mid gyrocopter by Maya Tovent. They're going to get this rune for free. And the other roaming support played by Alexapron, the Vengeful Spirit. The Radiant are going to smoke forward here. It's going to be popped by this Witch Doctor, waiting for somebody to show up. Witch Doctor does get here, but they don't have the Vengeful Spirit in front, so he's just going to walk away. And they ping back and they say, well, that smoke is wasted. Oh, maybe they're actually going to go back up the hill. So it is an aggressive trialing, maybe? That might be what they're setting up for here. Uh, that could be good since the Dyer did decide to go for dual lanes, and all they have up here is the Witch Doctor plus the Naga Siren. And this is going to shut down the Naga Siren pretty hard. Clinks is going to be the mid versus the Zeus. Uh, I think this is probably not in the favor of Clinks, but he may still be able to get an Orchid at a reasonable timing. Uh, probably going to have to Bottle Crow for it, though. And the Ursa is missing a couple waves of experience, but he is going to get back down to the bottom lane and be the solo safe lane farmer versus this Tidehunter plus Lion combo. Uh, he may move into the jungle fairly early because that is not a lane he's going to be happy with. So let's see how this is doing up here. The Naga Siren, she decided to rush a poor man's shield. So a little light on regen, probably because they were expecting just the clinks, and they have the two supports there, one with a lot of heals. Oh, that range is just perfect to get the cask off on the Skyrath Mage as well, an extra couple of right clicks, but the stun plus the nuke coming out onto the Witch Doctor. One more right click could clean him up, 
and they're going to run around the tower, but they don't see him yet. Skyrath is moving forward. He sees him, but he gets netted under the tower. He's going to take a couple tower hits. He does throw his nuke off, so that's going to be first blood for the Skyrath Mage, but the cask is going to hit both. The stun comes out, the magic missile from the Vengeful Spirit onto the Naga Siren. Naga does have enough mana, and two more seconds before she can use her net again. She's going to use it. Skyrath's going to tank a couple of creeps, and the clarity's going to be canceled by creeps, but Venge will manage to get the Skyrath out. And that first blood comes for free, along with a lot of harass, onto the Naga Siren. Oh, and the Gyrocopter's just going to dive this tower. He's going to get netted under it, though, but he has... Nope, he has drawn tower aggro. He's going to die here, most likely. Nope, he de-aggroed it. And then he re-aggroed it. One more hit. He salves up. He uses the entire salve. I think the one last hit wouldn't have killed him. He could have salved after it. But he doesn't want to take any chances. So this lane is... Uh, decent for the Radiant. They managed to get first blood out of it, but they're all really low in a timely Zeus ult. He's not six, anywhere near six, obviously, yet, but nuking down that Klinks pretty quickly, but Klinks does have an Invis room, which isn't all that useful against the Zeus, and Zeus is running out of mana, so Klinks uses his strafe, and he starts to move forward, and uh, Zeus is just going to bottle up and be fine. He's going to move to get the bottom room, but that's already been secured by the Lion in this dual lane off lane. Lion is harassing that, oh wait, Lion and Tidehunter are harassing this Ursa quite well. And Ursa uses, chooses to pop his salve now. He just wants to get enough regen really to get his Morbid Mask online and then he can abandon this lane if he wants and move into the jungle. It does look like the Dai decided to be a little bit aggressive here on top. Uh, Clarity popped for the Witch Doctor, but nothing really gonna come of it. Vengeful Spirit is headed back up towards top, so this is going to be their opportunity. They got first blood. This is their opportunity to make more happen. Nope, actually, the Skyrath decides he wants to TP bottom and secure more farm for this Ursa. Ursa not really feeling comfortable sitting down here, so he's just going to put some stacks of Fury Swipe onto that Tide Hunter and try to get just enough to really get his snowball started. And as the runes get checked, there's going to be a little bit of action up here top. It looks like the... nope, not the net. Not the cask either. They just took some right clicks from each other. And the Shirecopter is sitting really, really low. This is quite dangerous for him. A couple of good cask bounces or uh, net. If either of them ferries any regen up could make him dead. Not good. And of course the early game pause. At least this one's for pizza or something and not just because, you know, Volvo servers lag plus. Uh, looks like the Tidehunter, not the Tidehunter, the Ursa managed to get himself hexed and stunned up by the lion and cooldowns are all off so he's gonna be perfectly okay. Lion has a chance to get some mana off but the Ursa will survive and he has enough money for his Morbid Mask so he can go ahead and move to the jungle Maybe leave this uh, Skyrath to get some solo XP for a while. Oh, nope, some right clicks are going to come in. One last right click is not going to be quite enough. That damage block from the Stout Shield saving his life. And he's going to run back to base now that he has his Morbid Mask. Zeus has his boots ready. This, uh, Both of these players are sitting pretty low in lane. Klinks is going to move forward with a couple of... Uh, Searing Arrows, since he sees Zeus low and out of bottle charges, he's going to tank some tower hits, but he has bottle charges of his own to hit up. And Zeus has to play really far back right now. He really wants to nuke down this Klinks, but one more, maybe two more Burning Arrows uh, would kill him up. And Klinks uses a bottle charge, and it's really not going to be an opportunity available to the Zeus anymore. That Klinks gets just close enough for one more, two more, and that is a second blood to the Klinks. Uh, Zeus just playing a little bit too greedy there. Uh, this lane seems to be pretty stable. The heroes are all farming okay. Oh, this knock actually has seven last hits, but so does the Ursa. Uh, but the Tide Hunt, not the Tide Hunter, the Tide Hunter is pretty high on CS, gonna have a blink dagger to reasonable timing, but the Gyrocopter and the Clinks are getting a lot more out of their lanes than the Zeus. Uh, nice double stun out onto the Ursa and the Skyrath Mage from the Lion, but nothing really gonna come of it except for a little bit of nice timely harass.
And Shadowcopter does finally get forced out of this lane top, probably by Naga Illusions and Riptide, so Naga did manage to get her bottle up finally. This should be where Naga starts to catch up in CS. It is difficult early, especially if you're like dual lane versus tri lane, to get what you need. But this this bottle should ensure, especially if she manages to get this uh, Witch Doctor to go fill up the bottle at the runes for her. She should be able to actually go and take over this lane. Zeus is coming forward, he doesn't quite have enough mana for his ulti, or and the nuke was not quite off cooldown, so he doesn't manage to get the kill. He uses the ulti, but it's not quite enough. It does get the kill on the Skywrath Mage down in bottom. And he's going to go forward onto the Klinks, but Klinks has double damage. Zook throws out a Thunderbolt, and they're just going to be happy to call it that. Both players, no, not both players. A Sal popped and a couple bottle charges by the Zeus. And this could be the surprise he wants. Zeus is going to sit back. He doesn't. He just has enough mana for his nuke, and one more nuke should kill the Klinks, but Klinks is just going to run back to base. And Ursa has moved into jungle. He wants to start working up his Vlads. This bottom lane has been completely abandoned, as probably makes sense, given the laning setup that they have and what they're getting out of the lanes. Ursa's going to get more out of the jungle, and he's not really stopping the Titan Hunter from getting whatever he wants out of this bottom lane. So the entire dual lane is feeling pretty scared back here. They do see the Skyrath is rotated up. And they haven't seen the Venge on the map. They expect Venge to be around there, but Venge is actually ganking mid. What's happening over here? There's a nice double cask out onto the two supports. Not to the two supports, onto the Chirocopter and the Skyrath Mage, but nothing really gonna come of it. Maledict is nice too. Oh, Gyrocopter ulti after a uh, rocket. The Titan comes in with the Ravage and he's not quite going to clean up the Naga. The Naga bottles through and manages to survive. The Skyrath goes down as well. Very nice and timely counter gank by the Skyrath, not the Skyrath, by the Tide Hunter, killing off the Skyrath and the Gyrocopter as they try to dive the tower. Meanwhile, though, Klinks takes the opportunity to get quite a bit of damage here onto the mid tower, and he actually takes the mid tier one for completely free because Zeus was off getting the rune and couldn't really do anything. Tidehunter gets stunned by the Vengeful Spirit, and Klinks comes forward. He is using his burning arrows and manages to get the three right clicks it takes to clean up the Tidehunter. So Klinks managing to make the most of a somewhat sketchy situation. Skyrath and Gyrocopter sitting up here, going on to the Lion, and that Silence, the Mystic Seal plus Rocket Barrage combo, is uh, really quite a bit of damage you wouldn't necessarily expect. To uh, see out at this point in the game. And Lion does get caught out there since the Tidehunter moved top. And Gyro is diving this tower now, Silence on the Tide Hunter, and the first clap of the call down is going to hit him. Some right clicks are going to clean him up after a nuke from the Skyrath Mage. Zeus uses his ulti, but it's not enough. Oh, it is enough. He manages to get the. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Thunderbolt off onto the Ursa after killing also the Gyrocopter in the ulti, and the stun from the Lion manages to clean up the Skyrath Mage. So that was not a very successful dive from the Radiant team. Klinks does have his soul ring up, so he's going to be able to use that to get into the jungle and keep his HP and damage as high as he wants. And Orchid probably going to come out next for him. The Vengeful Spirit pinging out these two heroes in the jungle. She says, this guy's pulling. No. Stacking? No. Just walking away. And Gyrocopter comes in and farms up what's left of this stack. And that's got to be quite sad. Naga was going to use that sort of shooter CS up to the point where she can consider getting a nice early Radiance. But and it looks like she is still going for that. 1300 gold, so she's going to try and save up for the Relic. But uh, that stack steal is definitely going to hurt. Naga does decide when she gets uh, engaged on by the Vengeful Spirit that she's going to ulti and wait for everybody to come in, but the initiation actually comes much better after the song from the Radiant. The call down and the magic missile onto all of the Radiant heroes, dire heroes. But everything does end up being cleaned up by the DD Tidehunter and the Zeus ult.
they do see, they ping out this Klinx who is sitting over here. He wants to try and get it picked, wants to try and make the most, again, of a poor situation, but there's another hero TPing in, the Naga Sire, and coming back up. And Klinx is probably not going to want to go in 3v1 here. Oh, he let him see them. Or he let them see him. And he actually gets seen because of the Zeus True Sight. But it's not going to be quite enough time. Zeus does hit him again and almost manages to clean up the Clinks, but Clinks gets away with just a sliver of health. Thanks to a nice bottle charge in between. Zeus is TPing back to base, so that's not going to be an attempt to go clean up the Clinks as he comes over under the tower. Skyrath Mage and Vengeful Spirit, the eternal duo sitting in the tower trying to get some experience in last hits. Uh, Clinks is playing pretty risky. If they had any vision up here, then he would be entirely dead right now. But he's going to wait for his Dark Pact, Death Pact, yeah, Death Pact to wear off so he can go grab another creep and try again. Meanwhile, this Naga does decide she's going to go for drums. Two deaths, or no, one death, and she's off the Radiance, decides it's not going to happen early enough, so she decides, you know, I gotta tank up. This will probably end up getting a similarly timed Radiance as if she tried to rush it in this game, since there is so much gank potential and she has been really focused. Dyer are grabbing up five heroes for a push top. No, the Lion's going to go bottom and counter push, but the other four heroes are still here, going to push down this top tower, make some space for the Naga, make it so that she can farm without having to worry so much about ganks being easy to set up. And this tower looks like Radiant are content to just let it go for free. They are pinging out Rosh. Ursa says, you know, I have my Vlads. He does he? Yeah, he has his Vlads. So they're going to take this tower and then probably move into Rosh. The line is not enough to keep them, but he may be able to delay this long enough to ensure that the top tower does go down first. Dyer have fortified their towers. And they're only showing the Naga forward, taking a couple of tower hits, but it's not going to be enough to bait forward. And actually, the, uh, the Radiant heroes clean up their tower first, so Ursa is going to move right into Rosh here, most likely. Nope, they're TPing to top, so Zeus ult comes out, and the Gyrocopter gets quite a bit of damage off onto the heroes. The call down killing off the Naga Siren, and Zeus uh, not able to quite clean up any particular hero. Clink searing arrows down the rest of that Witch Doctor, as well as the Zeus. And this tower push turned into somewhat of a disaster for the Dire team. They got the Gyrocopter and the Vengeful Spirit, but the Clink's got two more kills, and the Zeus also... Not the Zeus, and the... Uh, Gyrocopter still managed to get a kill of his own. So this Orchid should be coming out very quickly for the Clinks. If he decides to go for it, he may choose something different. And I'll be quite interested to see what that is, if he does. Not moving in, she nets the Clinks, but nothing really is going to come of it. He's just going to start right-clicking her, and she throws a couple of illusions onto him. She uses her song to set up for TPs in by the Lion. Skyrath Mage does die to the Lion, outside of the song. Uh, she's not able to get the net off in time, but Tidehunter does ult because the sentry spots out the clinks. No follow-up after that, though. Not quite enough mana for his gush to hold that clinks in place. And clinks is going to be perfectly okay. Soul Ring, Death Pact, grab another couple of creeps. And he is just going to be able to go back in. Lion does spot him, but no hex, no finger. Finger wouldn't kill him after the Death Pact in any case. So it should be Rosh time any time now from this Ursaru. He's probably waiting for phase boots first. Those will come pretty quickly. Dyer are gearing up for push into this mid tower. They're tired of being picked off as they try to push into other other buildings, other places. They're gonna try and make some space for this Naga to finish, her her relic, or okay, drum. Yeah, drum is coming out for the Naga. So we'll see what she decides to go for. Maybe a uh, drums defusal game entirely for the Naga instead of the Relic first, or Relic at all. Lion going for two Null Talismans. Blink Dagger coming out next. While the Witch Doctor sitting on a wand and a Bracer. A 
It looks like the Dyer want to try and catch this Ursa as he runs away. The slow does come out from the Ursa. He starts to run back, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a completely dead Ursa. Zeus ult to finish the job. Zeus just sort of walked at him and killed him. Because the Ursa was just a little bit too far forward, trying to push this tier 2 tower alone. Vengeful Spirit and the Skywrath Mage, as well as the Clinks getting spotted out by our Dire Observer Warders. They come into the jungle to try and get some kills. Mm, but Naga's not quite that afraid of him, not getting back just yet. She Her ulti is not available right now. She's sending an illusion out into the lane, making it look like it's farming. Going to pull them forward, but it looks like the Radiant aren't going to be fooled. Maybe they are. Oh, that right click is going to make it pretty obvious, but maybe not. Skyrath did not use his concussive shot. And there are four heroes gearing up for the Radiant here, and we'll push into the top lane. And they are probably going to get this tower since the Song of the Siren. Oh, the Song of the Siren is actually available here in nine seconds. The Dire may decide to do something with that, but the tower will go down a little bit too soon. And they're just going to let that go. This does open up the Radiance access to the Dire Jungle, so they're going to start farming that up. And potentially get aggressive in here, move over towards the Dire Heroes that are all sort of clumped up. The Clinks can get vision, but there are quite a few Dire Sentries in the area, so it wouldn't be all that safe. And the Lion, not showing his Blink Dagger, but he is going to get his Blink Dagger now. That, that KS for 500 gold, 300 gold, is going to get that Lion's Blink Dagger, and he's going to start making space around the map with that. BKB going to be coming out fairly soon for the Gyrocopter. He's really tired of being ulted down and nuked down by the Zeus, but it may happen again. The Tide Hunter has managed to blink in and ravage, showing that blink for the first time. The Skyrath gets his ulti off on the Zeus. He tanks the entire duration of it, plus eventual spirit stun at the end. That prevented him from getting his ulti off, so the Gyrocopter does survive. A death cask, death ward, after a cask coming out for the Witch Doctor, but Venge managed to get a swap off, followed by a silence from the Skyrath Mage. And that is a dead Witch Doctor. Lion, meanwhile, did manage to find that Gyrocopter down here at the Rune. And uh, just hex him. Yeah, hex him and fingers cooldown. So it wasn't finger, just hex and right clicks. Probably showing that blink there as well. Clinks is almost done with his orchid. Actually, Clinks is done with his orchid. The courier is bringing that out right now for him. And this is uh, his opportunity to sort of start making things happen around the map, even more than he already was. He was getting quite a bit done, now he can get more done. But this Blink Tiger for the Lion is, it's not the earliest you've ever seen, but it's relatively early. Especially for, oh, he has actually the 4 position in this game. Okay, so a decent timing for a 4 position Lion getting his Blink Tiger up. Especially since he had the two Nullies beforehand. Tidehunter is being pinged out by the Radiant. Venge wants to get a swap off on him, but it's not quite going to be in range. Tidehunter moves back as soon as he sees the Vengeful Spirit, plus the Clinks farming creeps. And uh, that's not going to work very well. August Siren has saved up another 1800 gold, so she it looks like she is still going to go for the Relic into the Radiance. It's not quite as strong at, you know, 30 minutes as it is at 20, but it's still a pretty strong item on that hero, just because you can always keep the lanes pushed out. There's still three towers available for the Dire, and, you know, you can give those towers up to get the Radiance. As long as you don't lose more than one tier 3, you can usually still bring that back. Uh, Zeus using a Lightning Bolt in the pit to check to make sure that Ursa hasn't moved in there. There is a Dire Observer Ward that we'll see as soon as Ursa actually tries to make that play. Ursa looks like he might want to pick up a Blink Dagger first so he can blink from over here into there. A smoke coming out for the Radi or for the Dire, but it gets popped by the... Uh, I guess popped in the vision of the Radiance Observer Ward by the farming Ursa in the camp, and TPs are going to come in to make sure this gank isn't successful. It is still 5v3, but the Dire decided they're going to back off. And just sort of push this in. Don't want to take too many risks with the Naga. It's nice to get her out and ganking, but 
the uh, there any every risk you take is potentially game losing if you don't manage to get that relic because of it. Tower's going to go down pretty easy. Ready, and are going to just give this up. Uh, TP's up to top to deal with the double damage split pushing clinks. Four TP's. It's actually huge. The lion gets picked off before he manages to make it. BKB first shown by the gyrocopter, 10 second duration used, yes, 10 seconds, yes, 10 seconds were used. Clink still farming the camps, he is grabbing a morbid mask for maybe a mask of madness. Uh, this steering arrow since 6.82 is no longer an orb, so that could be a pretty nice choice for him to grab up, could also be just casual morbid mask. Doesn't manage to doesn't manage to get anything done to this Naga. She does run the right direction. He's afraid. Blink in by the Tidehunter, but Clinks is already long gone. He gets his creeps and he runs away. Waiting for his death pack to be available again. It is. He's going to go eat up a creep and maybe try something in mid where Radiant are gearing up for what looks like maybe a push and maybe uh, an attempted gank, but there is an Observer Ward sort of seeing everything that the Radiant maybe are trying to keep concealed. They're sitting back here, but die or no what's up their own observer ward does spot out the tide hunter does block this camp as well but they can't really get in there in time moves out as soon as the dire start radiant start moving up the hill they see all that happening and plenty of time for the tide hunter to get away ursa here he has 2250 so it is time for his blink dagger he is going to say you know fuck those creeps i am going back to the side shop getting that before anything happens and uh, probably a really good decision. If he had sat there, the lion could have come and burst him down. The lion does have a ghost scepter already, so... Blink dagger coming out for the Ursa. Ghost scepter coming out for the lion. Ursa has, maybe or maybe not, has clicked the lion, but... Now it doesn't matter. Lion just, you know, uses that ghost scepter, gets away. He does reveal it. It looked like he was trying to bait the Ursa forward into blinking on him, and then... Uh, hexing him up and using the Ghost Scepter afterwards, but no dice. And Clinks comes along, still saves him from the gank. Really nice, really timely. That is very fast for a four position. He has, he has more net worth than the Naga, actually. That's a little bit ridiculous. How is that? So he's farming a lane. Zeus, Tidehunter, and Witch Doctor are sitting over here. The Dire Heroes are all very, very even. Like, that's something you don't see very often. This Naga, she got shut down in the lane, but it's, uh, I don't know, she's behind the line. Clinks is going to move forward here, not spotted out by a Sentry Ward. He silences... Okay, that is actually going to be a kill, and he's going to go on to the Tidehunter as well with the moving with the move-in forward from the rest of the Radiant Heroes. Looks like there was a Conk Shot used earlier. Show me. Oh, he didn't use a Conk Shot, actually. So, a good pair of picks out from the Radiant, and they're going to start making use of their pretty significant farm advantage. Naga has managed to bank up enough gold for the relic almost 400 away and because of that they don't want to take this fight they have two heroes down Naga's 400 from relic so they're just gonna let this tower fall trade it for time but the radiant are feeling good here they say you know we know what you're doing we know you're trying to stall and we're just gonna move forward the zeus doesn't quite see that uh Oh, a not fantastic cask into Death Ward, but the song canceling any damage that it could have potentially gotten done. A good double stun from the Lion manages to allow the Zeus to clear everybody up, but the call down hits all five dire heroes. Not going to do much for them. The song setup probably worked fine. It definitely allowed the Lion to come in there and get a double stun off as well as a hex onto the gyro, not on the gyrocopter, onto the clinks. But, I don't know, that, that was potentially questionable Dota. And that relic is complete, so it's almost time for the Radiant, or for the Radiance to come out. Skywrath 
is not quite going to get the Zeus. Zeus uses himself up to prevent that last right click from hitting him. He would have taken the right click anyway. And he TPs home just fine. A cast coming out to kill off that Skyrath. That greedy, greedy Skyrath. TP in by the gyrocopter, nothing really gonna come of it. He has put out a missile onto this Witch Doctor, but nothing gonna come of that. Witch Doctor is very far away. And it's gonna die anyway. How many levels do he have in that? He has maxed it, so he's decided to get max max missile over stats. I like max missile now. It's five hundred damage, it's ridiculous. Well, max five hundred damage, but still ridiculous. Lion manages to take this bounty hunter, bounty hunter, bounty rune away from the Ursa, and Ursa and Clinks walk into the pit. This is so so risky. Lion has to know this is happening, but he blinks in, stuns, and recognizes not enough time. But he does get the ulti off onto the Clinks. The Clinks dies to a gush from the Tide Hunter, and Zeus using his Thunderbolt to make sure the TP out from the Ursa is unsuccessful, and this this attempted rush sneak turns into just a straight up rush take for the Dire. Uh, four staff is finished on the Skyrath Mage, so I want to see. I have not seen yet in all of Dotatum. Dotatum? Dota Town, maybe? But I have not seen four staff used. Uh, the, the Roshan is finally cleaned up. On Gyrocopter's missile yet. 6.82, they added that function, or 8.3 rather, they added that functionality. You can four staff a homing missile. I want to see it. Because it sounds fantastic. Naga Siren has finished her Radiance, and she still has two Outer Towers remaining. She's got to play it right, but this is probably the beginning of the end for the Radiant. They lost the Aegis. Uh, that did get picked up by Tidehunter, probably. Yeah, Tidehunter. He has almost finished his Refresher. Zeus working on Ags first. Lion has a an Ethblade at 28 minutes. And he's level 16. Now he's going to Hex. He uses the Ethblade, but he gets stunned. His nuke was not quite on cooldown. He was pretty greedy to be in the jungle there. He reveals his Ethblade a little bit early. And didn't have nuke available. He does get caught out. Uh, he was watched going up the hill here. Zeus four staffs forward. And Thunderbolt onto the Vengeful Spirit. Uses his ulti and does manage to finally clean her up with a final Arc Lightning. Gyrocopter is quite far ahead, has good items. He has the MKB long before uh, this Naga Sire and is even able to think about Butterfly. And the Mask of Madness is what the Clinks decides to go for with that Morbid Mask from earlier. Use your mana boots. Okay, good. So now the question is how do the teams want to play this from here? Obviously, the Radiant really don't want to sit and do nothing. But they kind of have to until the Aegis is out on the Tide Hunter, because even if they were to burst him down, and they have the potential to do that, they would not be able to burst him down twice before he got his Ravage off. And that's probably a refresher coming in for him. Oh no, he's just getting his Oblivion staff brought. Alright, let's see what Lion chooses to do. He's going to sit here. Take some creeps. He is no longer the most farmed hero on Dire. But the Radiant heroes are all sticking together except for this uh, Gyrocopter. Maybe Lion can come pick him, but that's entirely in the wrong place on the map. Uh, this Naga Siren is starting to farm up a storm now that her illusions can do their work. Some of the jungle is being taken. Actually, that's quite kind of this Ursa to clear out those mud golems. Nog would have to go and take care of those herself, otherwise. Alright, now move them down the lane. Just like that. Lion uh, uses Ethblade on himself and dies to a Skyrath nuke. 
So Ethblade, really cool idea, not really working out very well. Uh, Sentry is dewarded almost immediately, and Lion calls GG. Uh, Lion, dude, you have a Naga. You're sort of just sitting out here in the middle of nowhere, being like, "What the fuck?" With no vision up the hill, no vision up this hill. Like that was just being really out of position. Maybe he was trying to deward here. That would make the most sense, but I don't know. He was over here, like he was coming down this way. Anyway, Naga doing his thing. Her thing. Whatever. Radiant are choosing to gear up and push here. A blink in by the Tidehunter, followed by a Ravage. He has his refresher, so it's time to use that. But the Gyrocopter manages to take him out with a call down first. But Tidehunter has his Aegis. And he refreshes, ultis again, only the Witch Doctor is dead. The Gush managing to finish off the Skyrath Mage after a Zeus ulti, but that's all they're going to get out of this Aegis is one kill, and Zeus actually almost goes down in the back lines, but the Klinks does get burst down in time. It's actually pretty fantastic then. And Naga has her BOTs, everything is starting to go well. Did not see the Refresher. Well, he's working on it all game, and he's been showing on the map. So they're going to take this tower after a pretty fantastic team fight. Mm, doesn't look like they're going to get a second tower, but... Um, nah, they're not going to get a second tower here. Venge is swapping the Tidehunter up, but Tidehunter blinks out immediately. Uh, Zeus nuke onto the Vengeful Spirit, but he, she's not quite going to die yet. She does manage, to, does manage to walk away. The Eth Blade out onto the Gyrocopter while he's hexed. He is going to get away as well, but a Zeus nuke, is Arc Lightning rather, is going to finish him off. And Zeus right click going to finish off the Ursa. And Skyrath getting bursted down by the as of yet unused finger from the lion. So another really fantastic team fight. They don't have any good pushing heroes left alive. So they're just gonna back off. Move back to base, heal up, call it a victory. Yes, Klinks is gonna pick off this uh witch doctor. Maybe. Wish Doctor's gonna maybe get out of the way in time. And Lion coming back in, hexing up the Clinks, but not quite enough mana available to kill him in the end. Still full health though on this Clinks, and he's just gonna walk forward and do the same thing again. Orchid, right click, right click, right click, death. He's gonna heal up, but he's gonna die to the Orchid proc. Meanwhile, I'm TPing back to base because he has enough money for something. I guess he just decided to go. Naga Siren TPing out, doing her thing. And that's really going to be the story of this game at this point. The Radiant Heroes have a lot more gold, but Naga's gold is way more efficient. And that's sort of the end. Ursa really got nothing out of his lane, unfortunately. The laning setup did not allow him to really shine. He is getting a BKB, so there are going to be, I think, three, no, just two, Clink's deciding to go for the Maelstrom instead. One second while I take a drink of water. Alright, so, Dyer are gearing up for another push here, they have, they have an invisible Tidehunter with Refresher up in 12 seconds. All three Radiant Cores are sitting right here at the Ancients. If he moves up this hill, uh, it's not going to be quite in time, but he's still going to have all the positioning he needs. Oh, they're going to walk right into it. So this is the opportunity, and he has the heroes behind him. He walks in, he walks in. Oh, they're starting to move out. So Venge swaps in the Zeus, tries to do, tries to stun him, but Zeus manages to actually get away from that line coming in with the Eth Blade to make sure the Zeus ulti is able to clean up the Gyrocopter. That was a double? No, not a double, just a single. Single ulti, but that was only one Ravage. Refresher was... Oh, double Ravage, actually. My bad. So, Refresher Ravage was used, but they have 5v3 pushing up this hill, and they're just going to go ahead and take it. Uh, aggressive GGs 
are being called Silence from the Clinks, so that Zeus is unable to do anything. Uh, there were options there, but it's fine. The Clinks getting nuked down under Mask of Madness by the Zeus. Uh, this could be terrible. Naga Siren. Okay, okay, I see. So she's using her song to keep them in place while the tower gets taken. She's going to TP back to base. This is very safe. I believe they could have gotten more out of that since the Gyrocopter is not yet up and he's the most farmed hero in the game. And the Dire have two cores that are more farmed, but this uh, Vengeful Spear is going to get caught out. She moves too far looking for a swap, and she gets killed by a godlike Zeus. And it looks like they're going to go in again. Tidehunter blinks in and uses Anchor Smash to keep the Ursa from doing any damage. Silas coming out onto the Witch Doctor. Ursa blinks in, but he doesn't ground pound. He gets netted almost immediately. And he's going to be kited around, as will happen. But a fantastic call down onto almost the entire Dire team with a lot of flat cannon and a clinks on the back lines. It's actually going to make sure that the Radiant clean up four of the Dire heroes and Zeus is forced to TP away. So they got the Vengeful Spirit, they got the Skywrath, they got the Ursa, but it was too greedy. This uh, incredibly farmed Gyrocopter managing to 2v5 the dire team. And now he's going to just walk up mid, going to try to force out some buybacks. What buybacks are available? Uh, buyback is available from the Zeus, who is still alive. It is available from the Naga, but Song was used. It is up in 12 seconds, so this is actually probably going to be a counter tower, at least. Potentially counter racks. Gyrocopter staying quite far back. The Zeus is trying really hard to get things done, but he does get stunned up by the missile in the end. He holds, though. He forces them back without taking any buildings. But... As long as Naga keeps doing her thing, and she does have... Oh, she went for Talisman of Evasion first after Gyrocopter picked up his MKB. Uh, not so sure about that decision. I think potentially HP would have been a better get, but it does force the Gyrocopter to come deal with her. The other heroes really don't have the ability. The Ursa can, but he's single target. The Eventual Spirit and the Skyrath Mage almost definitely are not going to be able to do much to these illusions that are going to be pushing in all of their waves. Skyrath can nuke them down with the Arcane Bolt. It's pretty good at that, but it's still going to take two per illusion. That's like six seconds to clear the wave. Uh, Lion is catching out the Ursa, and Lion's Finger goes off, but Ursa BKBs before he's able to actually use it. But that BKB is used, so Ursa knows, not Ursa, Lion knows he can just blink back in, stun, no hex even needed. And Lion just has so much gold. So much gold. Ursa's BKB being forced out there. And it's down to 8 seconds, so that was a 9 second BKB. Pretty fantastic, especially since they also killed the Ursa. But Gyrocopter actually now going for a butterfly of his own, and there aren't really any good M not good, there aren't any MKB carriers on the Dire team. They also don't really right-click, so it should be okay. Now they're going to take this Rosh, and with this Rosh they should be able to take down at least one of those Tier 2s, potentially a Tier 2 and a Tier 3. Probably not going to be able to get a Rax into this Gyrocopter without getting him picked first, however. And Clinks does take down the Dire Courier. Not carrying anything, probably just headed out to pick up something that Nago or Tidehunter is going to drop in the pit. Uh, not sure who's going to pick it up here. Nobody's made space yet. If Clinks was in here, he could make plays. And Naga's going to drop the... what was that, a bracer? I can't click it. Oh. Oh, I can't. Okay, poor man's shield. That's what it was. So they do manage to take that. 
And I think that was entirely, like, not even called by the Radiant team, at least in pings. They probably noticed in chat, however. Or mentioned something in chat. So, Naga, Radiance, she has almost enough gold for an Eagle Song on top of this Talisman of Evasion, so she's nearly completed her Butterfly. And we have both Refreshers available now. So this is where things get difficult. Especially with a Lion that's as farmed as he is, holy shit, like, that's a lot of magic damage. But, on the flip side, it's a lot of magic damage, and the Radiant, or the Di yeah, the Radiant have two BKBs, probably headed for a third, yeah, three BKBs available on their cores. And Dagon coming out for the Skywrath. Push Stick eventually coming out for the Vengeful Spirit. But all three of the cores have BKBs. Pretty long duration BKBs. I think it's, yeah, still 10 seconds on Clinks, 8 seconds on Ursa, probably down to 4, no, 5, 7. Still 7 seconds on the Gyrocopters. He's been, he has been pretty uh, conservative with that. Not really being caught out very much either. I think the one time he cut out, they lost this mid tower, and then he killed the entire Dire team because they stuck around too long. So the Dire are going to gear up here for a push into the Radiant T2. This is not a tower that's very easy to defend, and it looks like the Radiant are actually going to smoke in and do it. So they're going to go up the hill. The Cauldown is going to get hit. Uh, nope, they're just going to pick the Zeus immediately. Ventral Spirit is going to die for trouble, but Zeus manages to Yules up out of the first hit. BB through the song, coming from the Gyrocopter, so he... Uh, manages to just right-click down that Zeus after he comes down from the Yules. Blink forward into the song from the Ursa means that he's not able to do anything about the Naga CP. Not that he could anyway, unless he could burst her down in time. Meanwhile, though, Clinks is going to pick off the gem carrier in the Tidehunter. I don't think they... I'm not sure that they noticed yet. Okay, now it's noticed. And they are feeling ultra confident here. Who has buybacks? Only Tidehunter. Tidehunter uses it immediately, and a net coming out from the Naga just holding off this gyrocopter from getting to their base. Tidehunter coming in. Both Ravages are still available, so if they overcommit here, they could still die, but Naga gets orchided up by the Clinks. A uh, straight plus Searing Arrows coming out. Burning Arrows, Searing Arrows. Ah, uh, Naga Song here to delay. Witch Doctor is going to set up his ulti here, but it's not going to be enough. And the Venge Swap from downtown onto the Naga, and a Conk Shot is going to clean up. Oh, just the Aegis, so there's still the potential for this to be turned around. Song is down, Call Down manages to catch out the uh, Dire Heroes. Zeus ult being used twice to clean up three Radiant Heroes, the BKBs were down. Now he's going to TP in and try to get this uh, Gyrocopter who has used his BKB, who's out of time, but Clinks is going to come in as well as the Gyrocopter uh, Satanic to d destroy this Naga. Zeus can't do anything to Clinks, and Clinks is going to right-click him down, but Zeus four staffs forward, Clinks takes the Rex. Three for three, but the most farmed heroes in Radiant do get out. Nope, no they don't. Uh, nope. Lion does manage to get the Hex and the follow-up Earth Spike onto the Clinks, but that was during the Fade time for Clinks' Invis, and he had a detection so he couldn't nuke him down. And Clinks is going to be super happy that there were no sentries there. Uh, the gem did get picked up. Uh, I think. It's not sitting there anymore. It's not in any... Oh, there it is. So, gem being picked up by one of the Radiant Heroes, probably the Vengeful Spirit, judging by where that's sitting. And with the swap in and the death, she left it there, but Dyer haven't noticed. Clinks could go in and steal that if he had the belief that it was still there and the inclination to try to get it. Refreshers coming off cooldown for the Dyer team in a little over a minute and a half. 
but they have lost to Rex, and that's really the position that Naga has some difficulty recovering from. Uh, Amanta, directly after a Talisman Evasion, deciding not to get the Butterfly because she did spot out the Gyrocopter's BKB. Line is sitting in the pit. It is a long time before Rosh, man. Let's see, this is t three minutes here, plus anywhere from zero to three minutes for the rest of it. But after taking such a convincing fight, even while taking the Aegis, the Radiant decide they're going to group up and push in this top tier 2. Tidehunter blinks in and uses Gush. Uh, call down in to several heroes. The Vengeful Spirit swaps out the Witch Doctor before he can do anything. A song to try and escape from the... or to extract the team out from the Naga Siren. And they're going to lose this tower and the Witch Doctor, but that's all. They do have to expend the song, but it's on a 60-second six, cooldown. It's already almost back up. And it will be back up by the time that this creep wave actually reaches the base. Uh, the gem was picked up. They did find it. Tidehunter has it again. And Radiant are content to just sort of sit back and farm for a bit since they did get the pick and the tower that they wanted. And I are going to move out, though. This lion is itching for some kills. Ursa blinks away before he gets a chance to actually move in, though. So, where is this game sort of going to go from here? Uh, Naga lost something. Poor Man's Shield? My guess, then, is that she... Yeah, it's sitting over here. That's it. So probably, actually I don't know what she's going to put in that slot at this point. Uh, typically you see after the Manta you'll grab a heart and then a butterfly, but since there's already an MKB coming out, for the, or there was an MKB at like 20 minutes, 22 minutes for the gyrocopter, then that's really not what you're going to want to go for. She does already have the Talisman Evasion though. So we'll see how she decides to play this. Manta being used, gonna move that forward, pull out the wave, the other one comes around and does that. Most likely. Yes, that's what's happening. And both teams sort of a little bit afraid to engage. They know that if they lose an engagement at this point and they don't take out some key heroes in at the same time, they're gonna lose the game. Lion blinking forward to try and grab that Ursa, but Ursa is already has already blinked away. He BKB TPs before the creep wave reaches him. It's already down to 5 seconds. It's a 60 second cooldown. I'm not sure if Dyer noticed that. But it is going to put them in a difficult situation moving forward. Dyer are going to get this tier 2, almost certainly. But meanwhile, Clinks and Venge. So Venge is up here for the aura. Clinks is up here to try and get this this tower pushed in. TP's coming back, the Tidehunter and the Naga Siren, so they aren't going to give anything up trying to take another tier 3 tower. They're just going to pull back, say, you know, we know we have this in the end. Probably. As long as Naga keeps getting gold and pushing out the waves with her Radiance, we can hold. We can hold for as long as is necessary, so she has 3,300 gold banked up. So it does look like she's decided she's going to go for the Eagle Song and finish the Butterfly. Or potentially just saving for buyback, which would probably be best. 1608. Uh, something more than 1608 that she could buy at this point. Maybe she's saving up for a Reaver instead. And it looks like... Nope, they're not actually going to smoke up. A Ghost Scepter coming out for the Tide Hunter. So there's... A Ghost Scepter and an Ethblade here for this dire team, but they're playing against a Vengeful Spirit and a Skyrath Mage. And Skyrath may be a 5 position, 4 position, yeah, 4 position this game. But when he starts getting leveled up, he has crazy int gain. This shit's going to do a lot of damage. 1.6 times int, his int is roughly uh, 100... Excuse me, roughly 125, and 
that's on a two second cooldown for a 180 damage nuke. That's going to be multiplied by those ghost scepters. So a smoke is used by the radiant, or by the dire team rather. The lion's going to blink in, gets the stun off, gets the hex, not the hex, gets the eth blade. Followed by a finger, and that is the end of the Vengeful Spirit. So a nice pick, but Venge isn't really the key target here. Everyone else is still farming. They're still grouped up fairly well. They can get to each other to help as long as that doesn't happen again. Skyros going to show himself, so it could, actually. Uh, 10 seconds, 20 seconds till the ulti, though. And Dyer going to take this opportunity to try and get a nice push down towards mid. Get Arax to even up this creep advantage. And excuse me one more moment while I get another drink. <coughs> so, uh, Dyer going to push in here. It's going to be 5v3 because Klinks is going to try to split push this top tower. Naga Siren ultiing in to hold people in place, but it's a little early. The BKBs are used immediately afterwards, and this is going to be sort of disastrous for the Dire team. Klinks moved all the way through the base to pick up a TP scroll, or to finish his BOTs, but... Oh! Uh, Lion manages to get that Eth Blade plus Finger combo off onto the Gyrocopter at the end of his BKB. And two buybacks coming out from the Radiant team. They are going to be able to hold here, and Klinks is going to take those top lane racks in the meanwhile. The missile is going to follow that Tidehunter. He doesn't manage to TP out. He does get hit by the missile, and the vision allows the Gyrocopter to come in and clean that up. A blink in, followed by a ground slam, ground pound, earth shock by the Ursaru. But meanwhile, Klinks does take this top set of racks, and Radiant actually don't lose anything. They have to expend some buybacks. They used there the Ursa buyback and the Gyrocopter buyback, but that's it. It's not ideal, but they got a lot more than they lost. And Gyrocopter now is 7,000 net worth ahead of this Naga Siren. Naga can hold out with one lane of racks down. She does go for the heart. So that she uh, makes, I think objectively the right decision between those two items. Ursa and Gyro here are going to actually just walk right into Rush, but they are spotted by a Dire Observer Ward, and this could be another turnaround. Oh, but BKBs are up. BKBs aren't being used just yet. Lion sitting up on the top of the hill. He doesn't have vision in the pit, but the, the Naga losers are going to give it to him. He uses the entire combo on the Ursa, but Ursa just manages to get BKB off before the last stun comes in. Doesn't matter because Rosh kills him. Gyrocopter can't quite see the... Oh boy, can't quite see the lion since the lion's not auto-attacking and... That's a fantastic set of plays, but it's not going to matter because Klinks is going to come in and clean it up anyway. Going to drop his Mask of Madness for the Aegis here. And she's going to be picked up by Venge? Yes. So... Aegis and Cheese are going to the Radiant even after plays were made by Lion. Just uh, not enough heroes, not enough cooldowns to really make that Roshan steal happen. And Radiant smoke up. They drop the mask, so Clink's dropped something else. TP scroll probably. Oh yeah, boosted travel. What? What the hell are you doing? Oh, you sold your mask. Okay, uh, Venge stunned Skyrath because he got caught. No. Skyrath got caught by Lion. I'm actually not entirely sure what happened. That not not the right cooldown for a finger. But Skyrath getting caught, not good. Zeus four stepping forward. He uses up that vengeful spirit, but Venge is just gonna swap him back into the the call down. Uh, song from the Naga Siren to set everything up. Tidehunter Ravage. Zeus ult. Zeus, refresh. Oh, refreshers are not quite on cooldown, but it doesn't matter because they do manage to clear up that gyrocopter. He doesn't get his cheese off. He didn't pick up the cheese. He tried to use his... Oh, boy. 
So Zeus managing to pick off the Vengeful Spirit as she tries to run away. Clink's using up the Aegis and his BKB, trying to TP out in time, and he is not going to make it. So there are no buybacks. No, Clink's, Clink still has buyback. But Jyra's down for 100 seconds, and this could be uh, quite a huge throw. And we're going to see the Dire, they're going to leave the Tide Hunter to defend, and they're going to bring everybody else down straight through mid and try to hold this. The, the net worth is just not alive to really hold this at the moment. There is a buyback available on Clinks, but they should know that the Gyrocopter buyback is still on cooldown for another... Well, it's another two minutes. I'm not entirely sure exactly. It looked like one something, but it's two minutes. And Zeus Radiance middle barracks are under attack. gonna walk up here. They have their support shield for forward, but he's actually gonna get the entire combo off onto the Skywrath Mage. Skywrath a little bit too close to blink forward by this lion, probably securing the game. <coughs> Clink's not using buyback yet, and Radiance or Diet decided to go straight for tier fours. Clink's does use buyback for that. But it probably isn't going to matter at this point. Gyrocopter is down for another 30 seconds. If they can stall, Gyro can still do quite a bit through BKB onto all of the Dire heroes. We've seen him 2v5 before. Maybe he can get it done again. So Klinks is going to move forward. He uses his Scotty, but he gets netted. The Wish Doctor is going to go down to some right clicks. Tidehunter refreshes. Zeus refreshes. They use their ultimates. That's going to be a ton of dead heroes. Gyrocopter just spawning back in, but that is GG. And the BM pause coming out. Gyrocopter's going to try, though. He's going to BKB up, but all you got to do in Gyro BKB is wait for it to expire, and now the throne has fallen. So that split push was a pretty huge throw. The the Clinks not being with the rest of his team really sort of uh, threw the game, honestly. As far excuse me, as far ahead as they were, it was their game to throw and they managed it. But we'll uh, get out of this game. We'll see if there's something gonna head up and I will see you next time.